Hello everyone, good good day. So we are going to discuss the previous the previous um types of logical fallacy. I have shared some statements that I got from the media and now we are going to discuss what types of logical fallacy that the netizens made. So here are the six um fallacies that I have shared to you and I would like you to um, identify what types of fallacies are they and also the reasoning. Okay, so here we go. Case number one, the data from Twitter. I heard we can't trust the AstraZeneca vaccine because the company is aligned with the eugenics movement. So this belongs to ad hominem. Ad hominem, if you still remember that it is when we neglect um, the goodness of someone uh, and focusing more on their fall, their flaws, more, focusing more on their weaknesses. So here is at hominem. So this netizen disregards the long research that have been done to create AstraZeneca vaccine simply because of an assumption that the vaccine belongs to eugenics movement. So here is not proven that AstraZeneca belongs to eugenics movement is not scientifically proven and it is neglected while the netizen believes choose to believe that AstraZeneca vaccine um, is more on dangerous one not because of the contain but more on how how the the researchers affiliate um, to certain movement okay so this one is at hominem and case number two it is also data from Twitter. Um, about a decade ago, most Democratic senators voted to approve installing hundreds of miles of fencing along the U.S.-Mexico border. So if you still remember that um, this issue has been very tempting <laughs> and interesting for many people in the world because it is the time when um, Trump try to propose long fence to separate us and mexico through through building fence so here his justification is simply because most most democratic senators so this is um this belongs to hasty generalization because um he believes that since most of democratic senators voted to approve the separation then he concludes jump he jumps into conclusion that the action is legal and ethical to do. We, um, um, he does not try to link this kind of action to humanity issue, uh, humanitarian issue, or um, more than that, who belongs to most democratic senators. So whether or not most of democratic senators represent um, another most of voices of American people. So here uh, belongs to hasty generalization. Well, case number three, the data is from Twitter as well. Islam does not value women because women cannot go to school. This also belongs to um, hasty generalization. Um, the difference between case two and three is on um, the main idea or the main concluding remark is stated in the beginning for case number three so the conclusion here is islam does not value women why because women cannot go to school both of these statements are um, claims and fallacies um, mostly on hasty generalization here the netizen made a shallow conclusion that islam perceives women as less Islam here means the religion, it can be about the system or maybe the people, uh, because of superficial claim that women cannot go to school. Both are not um, either scientifically proven or getting through discussion. Most of these are opinion and then claims, yet the claims are, um, are into logical fallacy that is hasty generalization. Well, case number four, we have the data from Instagram. Do not trust women to read the map. You will either be lost or be hurt. So this is very easy. It's a false dilemma. The netizen believes that there are only two negative options. 
uh, when women read a map, when women read some map, um, it is not it is not open. Yeah, he is not open for any other options, whether it's negative or positive. Yet here, um, there are only two choices left. It's like if you um, if you do not follow the rule, then you will be lost. If you do not follow me, then you will be regarded as um, sinner, for example. So here is a um, false dilemma. And case number five, and data from Twitter. How could you vote Ilhan Omar to be a leader? She is a woman who should stay at home and take care of children. Um, this belongs to ad hominem, um, neglecting the validity that Ilhan Omar has had. Uh, the netizen perceive Ilhan by seeing her through the lens of patriarchal belief that a woman should stay at home and take care of children. Um, the fallacy remains regardless the fact that Ilhan Omar has been twice elected by the society. Um, this is more like facts. This is factual. Twice elected by the society. That's truth. Uh, that's the truth and also it's a fact. And we can find it in many um, news. And regardless her sustained contribution in the parliament. So, yeah, although... Although... Um, Ilhan has done a lot and facts said so, uh, but the fallacy remains here. And then case six, data from Twitter, uh, I must make no negotiation. I have to obey my husband for every single instruction he makes. Um, this belongs to appeal to authority. Uh, for Indonesian, I think most of us are familiar with uh, an activist, um, feminist activist, Muslim feminist activist Kalis Mardiasi, um, she sometimes um, open the discussion in her feeds about women, especially those of women who are sur the survivor of um, survivor of many loss that happened to women. One of them is domestic violence. So this is the perception of a domestic violence survivor. And she believes that her husband authorizes her and deserves everything from her. So when um, when this netizen um, got married, she believes that she belongs to her husband. Her husband authorizes her. Authorize means um, everything that she has, everything that... Um, she is doing belongs to belongs and under the control of her husband so this misconception of the role of husband and wife leads to um, the survivor uh, leads the survivor into a logical fallacy and worse than that it leads her to the domestic violence so yeah these are the case pretty horrible <laughs> Pretty horrible, I give you some of the case because in this disruptive era, media discourse tend to lend their values on promoting the freedom of speech. Um, I said it disruptive because we we cannot help finding some post that shares a lot of logical fallacies, sharing ad hominem um, that leads into hate speech and then hasty generalization unsufficient information but then um yeah the netizens believe believe that their conclusion is absolute and concrete uh, instead the information that they had is not really sufficient and also false dilemma that makes people tend to be weakened uh, when we find it false dilemma um if you do not support A, then you belong to sinner. If you do not vote for A, then uh, you are not, you are not our people. So this is uh, this is very, um, very horrible. However, many people use this logical fallacy for campaigns, for um, marketing discourse to sell something, to endorse something, they might use logical fallacy. So, what would the 
what I would you like to think is that to what extent logical fallacy can lead into conflicts? In what way um, logical fallacy can lead into conflicts? Write your thought about this in 100 and 150 words. And then I have given you the outline. You can check it out. Okay, so thank you everyone.